Great, thank you. Um, and thanks to everyone for coming out to listen to me today. Um, so I'm a graduate student at the University of Massachusetts Amherst. But before that, um, I was actually a camp counselor. <laughs> and so my, my TAR project was actually motivated by some of the team building skills that I, I gained as a camp counselor and some of the things that I was trying to implement um, as a camp counselor to build communities with my campers. Um, that's what I tried to sort of bring into the classroom context and see if that was an effective um, tool to build classroom community. Um, next slide, please. So why should you care about classroom community? Well, classroom belonging actually has measurable impacts on student motivation and outcomes. Um, strong classroom communities can, can positively influence um, performance and um, this effect is especially important during like major life transitions, um, just like a first year college student. So I wanted to ask whether a team building activity that I'd used in the past could, could be used in my classroom to foster a sense of community. And this activity was high low jack, which basically the students came in and I asked them to give me one high from the week, one low from the week, and then something random about their week um, to sort of get these students to talk about what their, their experiences were, see where they had experiences in common with their classmates, and see where things were different. Um, so I was doing this uh, activity with first year um, seminar students. Next slide, please. Um, so I looked at four different sections of this um, first year seminar. One, uh, sorry, two of those sections were led by me, um, and two of the sections were led by a friend of mine who was not performing high-low jack in, in her classroom. Um, the content was different um, across the two, across the four sections rather, um, but they had a similar structure in terms of what the class looked like, um, how long it was, and that kind of stuff. Um, at the end of the semester, I um, designed a survey for both sets of classes. Um, in my classroom, um, the students were asked about their sense of community, um, high low jack, specifically how they felt about it, um, as well as some open-ended questions designed to gauge how effective um, I was at building a classroom uh, connection. So, you know, how many students in the class could they name correctly, um, and that kind of thing. Um, in the other two sections, um, in the control section, they obviously weren't asked about high low jack specifically, but they were asked about the activities in the class and whether or not they were fostering a sense of community. Um, next slide, please. So here we have the um, distribution of student responses um, for a representative question. My opinions were respected by the other students in this class. Um, and what you can see here is that the students in my two sections reported a much stronger sense of classroom community than the control classes. Um, each section has a bar, um, and the colors indicate what answer they gave. So blue was sort of the strongly agree, um, all the way down to red, which was the strongly disagree. Um, obviously, we didn't have too many of those. <laughs> and the numbers within the bars represent uh, the percent of the class that answered that, that um, number. So I also ran a multivariate analysis of variance on um, the responses specifically for the classroom community questions that were um, answered on a Likert scale. Um, and I used instructor and section as my explanatory variables. Um, and the results of that were that my classes reported significantly higher scores with a p-value of 0.02. Um, the section and the interaction between the section and the instructor was not significant. Next slide, please. So what are some conclusions that we can draw from this? Well, high low jack can definitely be used um, effectively to build a stronger classroom community. The students in my classes reported a stronger classroom community regardless of which section they were in. Um, but, and I didn't have time to go into this in this particular presentation, that effect seems to be amplified in a section that bought into the activity more. So they were reporting a much um, much stronger <laughs> appreciation for that particular activity than the other section that I ran. Um, so with that, um, next slide, please. I would like to thank all of my student responders, um, my friend Emily, who helped me out by providing my control sections, um, Sarah Pojiask and Beth Jacob for providing feedback on the project, as well as Hurdle and Tessie for giving me the opportunity to talk about it. Thank you. Next slide. Great, thank you.
we're we're on to questions and we've got a hand up already. So, Amon, go ahead. Hi. Yeah, great presentation. So I was curious how like what were the class sizes for your uh, yeah class sizes for your section and I'm just wondering how much time did it take like to ask every student hi Joe and Jack. So like I just want to know more about how you implemented it. Thanks. Yeah, totally. So the um, number of students in each class was um, slightly different. So they were all capped at 20. So I think. In my two sections, I had about 36 students. In Emily's sections, she had about um, 31 or 32, something like that. Um, and in terms of the time that it took, <laughs> um, it did take a while. And it was a 50-minute class. So it, it was actually a big portion of my class that um, ended up doing this. I, I tried to save about like seven to seven to 10 minutes um, at the end of each section to talk about it. Um, but sometimes I had to skip it due to time constraints. And, and so I, it didn't run every single week, but it ran as, as many weeks as I could. Mm -hmm. Thanks. <laughs> Great, thank you. And I see that uh, a couple of other people have asked the question about, about size. Uh, there's one question on here about your willingness to share your survey questions, because they're going to be teaching a first year seminar. Uh, so you might you might address that one, which should be a, a quick answer, hopefully. Um, yes, I'm totally willing to share my survey questions. Um, I would be willing to if you emailed me. I can I can definitely give those to you. Um, so my email is um, d navon. So my first initial and my last name at um, cns.umass.edu. So go ahead and email me, and I'll, I'll send those along. Great, thank you. Um, so this, this question, you know, do you feel doing a, a TAR project has impacted your own sense of community um, in academia or at your university? Um, that's an interesting question. Uh, not necessarily because I haven't had too many opportunities to talk about TAR um, within my my um, university, but I do think that this is something um, and and classroom belonging is something that I'm going to continue to be interested in and excited about and trying to foster in my classes. So in that sense, um, yes, it's impacted um, how important I think I see that as, as um, being uh, useful for, for students. OK, great. So I'm, go I'm going to kind of sort of combine two of the questions on here, uh, which really deal with, did any, did your students have any reservations about this exercise? And is, did you have any strategies to deal with um, sort of bullying on campus? So I guess the, this idea of, of um, how do you wrap all this in in the context of inclusion in the classroom? Yeah, totally. Um, that's a huge, huge topic that I do not feel 100% prepared to talk about. <laughs> um, but I. I will say that one of my sections, um, the one that didn't buy in as much, was reserved overall. And it took a lot for me to get them to talk in class. Um, and it was a discussion-based course. So that was a big, big component of, of their grade at the end of the, at the, end of the year. Um, so, so the students in that class seem to have a little bit more reservations just about talking in general. I don't know about within the activity or not. Um, the other class was much more outgoing, and, and they didn't seem to have or, or voice any um, reservations about the exercise whatsoever. Um, as for the bullying problem, um, you know, I think that feeling like you belong to a classroom community and feeling like you're in an engaged and welcoming community can help um, any student feel like they can overcome or handle a bully better. Um, but I, I really don't have too much expertise on that topic. OK, thank you. So I think we've got time for one more. So Aman, you've got your hand up again. So Yeah, uh, I just want to know your thoughts on an idea like this. Like, you can also have perhaps something like Poll Anywhere, where everyone just like types their high, low, and jack, and it anonymously is projected on the screen. It will be less person, but I just want to know like uh, how effective would that be if you have an opinion on that? Yeah, I think I think that might work really well, particularly in a larger classroom setting, right? So my classes were capped at twenty students, um, and I, I had like sixteen in one and, and about twenty in the other, and 
you know, that works well for us because they did get a lot of face time, and I think that that's an important aspect. Um, but I think in a larger class, it might it might work well.